But for this morning, I'm answering the final question of this series of sermons. And the question today is, what's the purpose of life? And that's a question, it seems to me, that everybody should answer. Everybody should be thinking about. If you believe in God, if you don't believe in God, you should be asking the question, what exactly is the purpose of life? What's it all about? Why are we here? I mean, it doesn't matter if you're religious or not religious. What's, what's the reason we're here? And there's a, a guy in the Bible named Solomon who, who explores that question. He's trying to figure it out. And he's, I don't know what that's called when you have a, like a maze where you have these lines and you, you know, like you got to make the line go all the way to the end and get to the goal. You know, the kids have this. What are the, those things called? Oh, a maze. Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, you, then you know what I'm talking about. Like, and the, if you do that, what's it called again? A maze? If you do that, you come to a dead end. Whoops, that's not right. Whoops, that's not right. Oh, this will work. Whoops, that's not right. You know, that kind of thing. And uh, that's the way Solomon was. He said, I'm going to try this, figure out the purpose of life. I'm going to go this way. No, I'm going to go that way. No, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go that way. And he's trying different things out. Nothing has worked for him. This is, this is what it says. I'm going to read a little, little bit of what Solomon writes regarding his tr attempts to figure out what life is about. And, and I'm going to read about 11 verses. So listen, this is what he says. <clears throat> I said to myself, because this thought process is, is, uh, is often inside our head. At least I hope you think You've thought, I hope everybody here at some point has asked the question, what's the purpose of life? I mean, that's a pretty good question to ask. Should be asking that question. So he's still thinking inside his head, and he said, I said to myself, hmm, I get an idea. What, come on, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things in life. Maybe pleasure is what it's all about. But I found out that this, too, was meaningless. So I said, laughter is silly. What good does it achieve? What good is it to, to seek pleasure? That's not it. Nope, that's not it. After much thought, so he's thinking. After much thought, I decided to cheer myself with wine and get sloshed and live for the weekend. Anybody do that? I mean, do you know anybody that does that? <laughs> Came out wrong again. I, I never know how to speak. But I mean, do you know people like that? Sure, absolutely, I live for the weekend. I live the party. And he says, and while still seeking wisdom, I clutched at foolishness. It's like, this is crazy. In this way, I tried to experience the only happiness, this was a sad line, I tried to experience the only happiness most people find in their brief life in this world. That's the only happiness some people have, he said. That's a sad line. He says, now it's shifting gears. He says, I also tried to find meaning by building, now he's going down a different path in this maze, by building huge homes for myself and by planting beautiful vineyards. I made gardens and parks, filling them with all kinds of true trees. Now you may not have the money to do these things, but he did. And so he went down this path, even though you might not be able to. So he did it for us. He said, I, I built reservoirs to collect water to irrigate my flourishing groves. I bought slaves, both men and women, and others were born in my household. I also owned large herds and flocks, more than any of the kings who had lived in Jerusalem before me. I collected great sums of silver and gold, the treasure of many kings and provinces. I, try, I hired wonderful singers, both men and women, and, they ha and had many beautiful concubines. I had everything a man could want. And he says, it's dead end. Didn't work. So he summarizes, <coughs> I became greater <coughs> than all who had lived in Jerusalem before me, and my wisdom never failed me. Anything I wanted, I would take. I found myself, I denied myself no pleasure. I even found great pleasure in hard work. Do you know anybody that does that? <sighs> I live to work. Some people are wired that way. They, I, my world is work. I found great pleasure in hard work, a reward for all my labors, but as I looked at everything I worked oh, so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless, like chasing the wind. There was nothing worthwhile anywhere. He's trying to figure out what's the purpose of life. Have you ever asked the question, what's the purpose of my life? What's the purpose? Why am I here? I'm going to live 70, 80, 90, or whatever it is. What is the purpose of my life? That's what I want to talk about today. Uh, but I want to begin by talking about 
some games. Have you ever played any of these games? You know this game? You know this game? Anybody know this game? Anybody play this game? Anybody know this game? Ten people. Deanna and I are rare. Uh, this crowd, just looking at you, I'm sure you played this game. <laughs> See, that's more your speed. This is a little too complex for you all. Anybody play this game? See, that's what I knew. I thought. How about this game? Anybody play this game? Monopoly, okay, we played that game, yeah. How about this game? Anybody play this game? This is a good game, Risk, right? So I'd like you to use your imagination this morning, if you would, please. Do you all have imaginations? Okay. <laughs> so the two of us will be talking about this. So uh, I want you to use your imagination, and I want to pretend that I'm going to take you on a bus ride with 11 other people that you do not know. And, and I'm taking you, so I'm talking to every one of you individually, okay, so it's, it's you individually and 11 other people that you've never met before. We're gonna go to a bus ride and we're gonna go to this fantastic mountain retreat house that's beautiful. There's going to be 12 people there, and everybody's going to have their own private room, private bathroom, and I've hired a chef for the weekend. It's kind of like a cruise in that respect. He the or she will make anything you want at any hour, day or night. It's going to be great. Whatever you want to eat, you can have, and uh, so we're going to come, come to this retreat, retreat house together, you and 11 other people. Everybody excited about that? Some of us are saying, Ooh, but I don't know anybody. Forget that. You're coming anyway, okay? And you've agreed to come. It's my game, my imagination, so we're going to do it my way. So we come there, and, and you agree to come. And, oh, when we get to the house, and I say, oh, by the way, it's all free, nothing, no cost. Dropping you off Friday night, 6 o'clock. Going to be back with the bus uh, Sunday night, 8 o'clock, okay? And... Uh, and when you come into this house, I didn't mention it until we got there, there's no electronics, okay? So put away your phones. No, no, not put away. Here's a bucket. I'm going to lock it outside the house. It's, the phones go there, okay? <gasps> phones go away. There's no television set. There's no DVD player. There's no internet. <gasps> There's no telephones, no TV, there's none of that stuff. There's electricity, okay? That's what you need. You got electricity. Oh, there's no books in the shelves. Nothing like that. We come into the house. So we get there. You and, you and 11 other people, and you're like thinking, what's this going to be like? And we come into the house, and I give zero explanation for the plans for the weekend, okay? I don't say, this is what we're going to do now, and this is what, no. I'm even going to stay, Okay? And you can't talk to the, uh, the chef because the chef is mute. He, he can't talk. <laughs> All he can do is cook. He's good at cooking. And, and, and we come into the house and you think, and I get the, this game. And, and you don't know, you've never played this game before. Not only have you never played this game before, you don't even know that it is a game. That's how ignorant you are of this particular game. You don't know it. I open up the box and I go like this. Okay, Deanna, all the pieces will be returned to the box. <laughs> and people that help me clean up will not be stepping on any box ends, because that's a violation in our family. Uh, people are, have been thrown out of the family over that kind of thing. You do not crush the box, okay? So we come into the house, and I grab these games. And, and surprisingly enough, Surprisingly enough, you, you, you're thinking this is a, a peculiar behavior, and you're thinking, what is he doing? And, and again, you don't, you don't even know that these are games. You don't know these are games, Deanna? Settle down. <laughs> I'm just glad the rest of you are here, because if it weren't, there would be a nasty, ugly fight, and you'd say, I didn't think pastors had marriages like that, but they do. And so I just... I just go there, <coughs> drop you off. You all go to your room or wherever. I, I don't care where you go. I just drop you off and say, hey, the chef's here. Eat whatever you want. I give no definition of the weekend. You don't know that these things are parts of games. You don't know that at all. And, and I give you, no, and there's no electronics. 
and I walk out of the room. How do you feel about your weekend? <laughs> oh, this is awkward. This is like, what's happening? What are we going to do? You don't know anybody. What are we going to do? And so there's no definition. At some point, you notice patterns here. These, these cards look similar to each other. And these houses, there's houses, there's, and you start, you all, all 12 of you, there's nothing else to do. And eventually you, you're trying to figure this out. This is like a mystery. What is this about? And you begin to explore this and look at it. And, and everybody's getting engaged in it because you, you think this weekend has something to do with this, but you don't know for sure because I didn't tell you what the weekend meant. And you're exploring it, figuring it out. And eventually, some of you decide that I think these are games. And you decide to play them. But you don't know the rules. And so you begin to make up rules. And, and you cross-pollinate pieces from one game to another game. And, and you just begin to play. But you don't know if high wins or low wins. You don't know what winning is. You don't know what losing is. You don't know, you don't know anything. And this is the whole weekend. Can you imagine how many of you are like, I'd like to do that. Like, that's weird, right? And so the whole weekend comes. And finally, it's mercifully 8 o'clock Sunday night. And I pull up on time, bus comes, and you come out of the house. I come in, hey, time to go. I don't ask you, did you have a good time? So I'm not going to define whether that was the purpose of the weekend, whether you had a good time or not. I'm not going to define that. I just say, hey, time to go. And you get in, and you, you want to know, what's your question? What was this about? And what was this game, what was this thing called Monopoly? What's that? What's Candyland? What's that? And you want to know, how do I play? This is a game, isn't it? I don't say anything. How do you play the game? I don't say anything. You want definition. And you don't know how to figure it out. You've done it. But you don't know whether you won or lost. It. Is cheating allowed or not allowed? You don't know anything. It's a frustrating weekend. And you try to figure it out. But you don't know. You don't know what, what, what this, is, this is all about. That is what life is like without God. It, it, without God, if you're asking the question, what is the purpose of life? Without God defining that purpose, it's up to all of you individually to figure out what is the purpose of life. And maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, but you all get the chance, just like on that weekend, to figure out the purpose of life. The only difference between this scenario that I've just talked about and your life is that your life is 70 years long and this is only three, three days long. And you could go through the entire life trying to figure out what is its meaning. I went on the internet to, to look at different websites, different places where people speculated as to what the meaning of life is. And, and the answers are all over the board. There's all kinds of answers. Some are saying silly things, just ridiculous things, just to be a joke. Some people are saying, hey, it's all about partying on the weekend. It's all about money. Some are poetic, some intellectualized, some, some go in an emotional place, some think deeply and reflectively, others are very superficial. It's, it's a broad variety of answers that are given as to what is the meaning of life. But none of the answers are consistent, there's no uniformity, it's all like, you have your definition of me. You have your definition. You have your definition. Just like you would decide how to play this game, and you would decide how to play this game, and you would decide. It's, it's just diverse. The, the best answer, and you're going to think this is a joke, but I don't think it is. The best answer I saw uh, in, in the looking that I did on the internet for different explanations of the meaning of life was one that came from a guy named George Bannister. George Bannister said that life can be defined in five words. Born, eat, poo, procreate, and die. It's that simple. I think he's right. I think that's the meaning of life without God. It's like anything else you say is your speculation, just like anything else you say. Well, this is how you play the game. Well, you and I might debate about that. Was well, that how you play the game or is this how you play the game? Who's to say what's right? And that's, that's how life is devoid of God. What is life's 
meaning. And you say it's this, and this person says it's that, and I say it's this, and there's no uniformity, and at the end of the game, I don't know. At the end of the game of life, I don't know. Did I win? Did I lose? Was, was I good? Was I bad? I don't know. I don't know. The Bible, the Bible gives definition. The Bible gives definition of the meaning of life, and what it does is it creates uniformity of thought and harmony and relational purpose. So for this weekend, this week rather, I went with the young adult interns in New York City. We participated in a program called Metro World Child, where they go out and they do sidewalks, send to school, 220 sites. And, and even though I never met these people from Mexico and Finland, did anybody ever know anybody from Min Finland before? I never met a Finn before. Uh, met somebody from uh, Ukraine, numerous people from Germany, somebody from South Korea, met all these people. There was an immediate harmony and, uni uh, and unity among us because we all agreed on the purpose of life. We all had a commonly shared purpose and, and we were together in a task because we shared a common understanding of the purpose of life. It was radically different from what this week represented. So what actually happened to me this week is that I spent a week, not a weekend, a week with other people, but my week was defined because someone told me, God, what my purpose was, and it brought us together. It brought us together. Such a degree that one of the persons I met this week, a woman from Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, she's worked for this organization for, uh, for 11 years. I said, hey, her name was Amanda, I said to Amanda, hey, if you need a break sometime, because they work like crazy, only day off is Monday. I said, if you want to come down to our house sometime, stay, stay overnight and just you know, borrow the car. I said, you can come down sometime. I didn't mention it to Deanna yet. I'm mentioning it now because I thought it would go better if I mentioned it in front of. <laughs> what do you think about that idea, Deanna? Oh, yeah, thumbs up. Oh, whoa. Timing is everything. You gotta, this is a trick, Jim. You've got to ask your wife to do certain things at just the right time. It goes much better. It's all about timing. <laughs> but here's the point. We have uniformity and purpose. I never met these people before. I never met her before. And yet we're united. There's a purpose. There's a harmony. And, and sure enough, the thing that brings me joy is the thing that brings th these other individuals joy. We have purpose. And yet without God, how do you think we play this game? I don't know. What do you think? And we argue about it. Is this a rule or is this a rule? Is this meaningful or is this meaningful? I don't know. The Bible gives us that purpose. If the Bible's true. But we talked about that several weeks ago. Just listen to this frame of reference. This skeletal understanding of our purpose. Listen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says, The human body has many parts. But the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. See, we're, we are not disjoint individuals. It's not you and 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 you all disjointly doing whatever, defining how we live life. No, the scripture says we are one body. We are not disconnected. There's a uniform purpose to our existence is what it says. It says that some of us are Jews. Some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, some are male, some are female, some are tall, some are short, some are old, some are young. Some are outgoing, some are quiet, some would like the weekend I described, some would hate the weekend I described. We're all different, and yet it says, but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit pulsating through our spiritual veins. There's a uniformity when we become born again in Christ. That Holy Spirit enters us and we have a sense of what our purpose is. And if we're obedient, we live according to that purpose. And when you achieve that purpose in your life, I celebrate with you. And when I achieve God's purpose in my life, you celebrate with me. There's purpose to us that doesn't exist in my life without the existence of God and his driving that purpose for me. Let me, let me read more. Earlier, same chat passage of scripture, it says, there are different spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. Every single person in this room, every person, 
Every person in this room has purpose. Every person has meaning. Every person is important. Every single person in this room is important. That's what the scripture says. And everybody here in, in Christ has a spiritual gift and a role to play. There are different kinds of service. There's different ways that different people serve. But the same Lord is served. God works in different ways. But it's the same God who does the work in all of us. And when we, when we allow God's Holy Spirit to come into our life and we live in accordance to his leading for our lives, then we end up winning the game of life. Experiencing a deep sense of satisfaction when our life weekend is over and we take our last breath. We say, that was a meaningful existence. And I'm sure of it. Because my certainty rests not in my idea of how the game is to be played. My certainty rests in the fact that I know the one who created the game and designed the game in the first place. One person who played this game well, that as God defined it, was Paul. And when Paul was nearing the end of his life, this is what Paul says about his life. He says, as for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. How does he feel about that? He feels okay about that. Why? Because he's lived in accordance with the will of God operating in his life. He feels good about his life. Time of my death is near. I'm okay with that. I have fought the good fight. How does he know that he's fought the good fight? How does he know he's done the right thing? He knows he's done the right thing because his, his life purpose is defined in God's word. It's not nebulous. It's not guesswork. He says, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. He knew the course of his life. He knew because he was following leading of the Holy Spirit. I finished the race and I've remained faithful. And, and now the prize awaits me. I'm a winner. How does he define win? How do I define winning? I don't know. I don't know what winning is. I don't know if high wins or low wins. I don't know that. But Paul knows I am a winner because I've been obedient to Christ. He says, and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look for his appearing. He's satisfied. He comes to the end of his life and he's satisfied and a deep level because he's fulfilled a purpose that rings true in his spirit. He knows it. He has peace with God and he's lived out that purpose. What's the purpose of your life? How do you define, not this weekend experience, but the game of your life? How do you define it? How do you, what's the game? What's the deal for you? Some people define it as money. It seems so superficial for, to those of us who don't define it in that way, but some people really do. It's, it's about accumulating money. Do, do you know people like that? Do you know of people like that? Absolutely. Guess what happened in 1929 when the stock market crashed? People that defined their life as solely in terms of dollars and cents so, said to themselves, I've lost everything. And they jumped out of buildings. Why? Did they lose everything? Yes, they did. Everything that mattered to them. And so everything that mattered was lost. What mattered to them was money. I lost it all. I'm jumping out of a building. There's no purpose for me going on living. There's people, performers, that achieve great fame and money and prestige and notoriety. And yet in spite of all that they achieve in their life, they take their life. Because at some juncture along the way they say, this fame that I've achieved, this money that I've gained, this notoriety that I've accomplished for myself, it's meaningless. They're like Solomon writing in the book of Ecclesiastes. It's meaningless. And they think this is the rules of the game. And then as they near the end of their life or the life that they want to live it, they say, if that's all there is, I'm, I'm out of here. And they check out. But God's word, God's word defines life in a more full way. Some people, some people on the internet would say, I define life's purpose as being a good father, being a good mother, being a good husband, being a good wife, helping other people. And you know what? There's truth in that. But there's not total truth. See, there's not total truth. I might be able to figure out th these, these pieces, plastic pieces with numbers on from the game Rummy Cube. These obviously go together. 
that's truth. They go together. I can figure that out. And there is a possibility that people can figure out partial truths. Yes, it is good to be a good father, a good mother, a good husband, a good wife. It is good to help other people. But it's not the whole truth. It's not the complete plan. Because God who created you has a more complete plan for every one of us. And his complete plan, plan is to make every day an adventure, a purposeful existence beyond our wildest dreams. He wants, when we open the door of our life to him, to fill us with his Holy Spirit and direct us each and every day. It's about being a good father and a good mother and a good husband and a good wife and a good person. It's about that, but it's more than that. He wants to take us to a level of, and a plane of existence and purposefulness that's beyond our wildest dreams. And he wants to combine our sense of purpose with the infusion of the power of the Holy Spirit so that with God's help we do things that we can't even begin to imagine. And all of a sudden it goes to a different place. So again, I go, I go back to the question. The question of the day. Whether you're religious or whether you're not religious. A believer or not a believer. What's the purpose of your life? How have you figured it out? What's the purpose of your life? Now, I preached these series, this series of sermons for six weeks beginning Easter. I chose Easter. Why? Because people come on Easter Sunday. And I tried to hook people into the idea of these questions so that they would give six weeks of their time to exploring these questions. And if you've done that, I want to thank you for your pursuit of these questions. I hope you continue to come and it doesn't end here. But I want to thank those of you who have pursued these questions with me over the past couple of weeks here in this room and also listening on YouTube or podcast or wherever else we, you have access to this information. Thank you for persevering. But now it's time to decide if you've never decided before. What are you going to do about all this? Is there or is there not a God? I believe there is. Can I prove it? No, I can't. Absolutely. Is the Bible true or is it not? I believe it is. I can't prove it. Absolutely. Do all roads lead to God? I don't believe so. I can't prove it to you, but I've, convinced, I've presented convincing reasons why that's not true, that one way is through Christ Jesus. The way is through Christ Jesus. I believe that we do have a God that is real, that does permit for various reasons suffering to exist in this world. I talked about that. And in spite of the fact that suffering exists, I still commit my life to him. And if you've been hanging in here with me, I'm asking you today to decide, okay, I'm going to entrust my life to him. I'm going to make a decision. I've hung in here. And, and, and today particularly, I want my life to have purpose beyond the silliness that occupies me so often. And so if you've never done this before, listening on podcasts or in this room, I'd like to ask you to embrace Jesus Christ. To believe, number one, that God loves you. He uniquely loves you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He loves you. I'd like you to embrace the idea that you have sinned because you have. And God is a perfect God and he can't handle any sin. He feels about sin the same way as we feel about the smell of a skunk. He doesn't tolerate it. But he's provided a way. And the way that he's provided is the forgiveness that's ours through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And at one point, and I'm hoping that that point would be right now. There's somebody here this morning, somebody here in the room right now has never done this, and I'm asking you to do this today so that your life does have purpose and is not as aimless as the weekend I described. I'm asking you today to open the door of your life to him because the Bible says Jesus stands at the door and knocks and knocks and knocks. Today, open the door of your life to him. And let him come in. And from this point onward, let him call the shots. And if you do that, he'll begin to lead you to be a better husband, a better wife, a better father, a better mother, a better person. But he'll also take you to horizons that you can't even begin to imagine. And he'll empower you to do great things to glorify the Heavenly Father. But it all begins with you today opening the door of your life 
to him. So whether you're listening in the podcast or you're listening in this room, I'd like to ask you, I'm asking you, would you please pray with me in your spirit and invite him into your life and consistently walk it out, not just today, but for the rest of your life so that you can say along with the Apostle Paul, I'm satisfied. There's a prize waiting for me as I'm a winner in Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me this morning? Let's pray. I'm going to become you. God, I choose to believe that you are real. And today, I acknowledge that I've sinned. You've died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. Today, I'm laying aside my pride. I'm suspending my questions. And I'm taking a step of faith. Today, I'm opening the door to you. I don't know what that door opening event will bring to me. I don't know how it will change me. But today, I open the door of my life to you, Lord God. And I pray that you would come in and take over. I promise to follow you as you lead me by your Holy Spirit. And I'm trusting that as you show me your plan, that you will bring to me fulfillment, peace, satisfaction, and joy, and purpose. Thank you for your love. Thank you for choosing me. And I now accept your love forever. Christ, we pray. Amen.